Welcome to another Q&A episode. We are not on the loop. This is Lake Ontario, and that's Oswego. We're heading south towards the Bahamas again. Let's get out of the wind and we'll fill it in. This Q&A episode, we're going to go through three things. Why in the world did we buy Tollycraft 44? What we like about the boat and what we don't like about, about yes. the boat. But first, uh, we're going to tell you what we're doing. Because uh, those of you who haven't been following on Instagram, or even if you have been following on Instagram, you would see that we announced that we were going to do the loop this year. What loop? The loop. <laughs> We're not doing the loop. That's still in the plans in the future. Yes. But, but because the repairs to the boat took so long, we were too late getting back into Canada, and then too late, it would have been too late getting up into the Georgian Bay area, and then too late coming down uh, Lake Michigan to Chicago. We would have had Chicago. time to enjoy Yeah, we've been Georgian rushing through. We would have been rushing it. So we decided we're going to save that for another time. Yeah. We enjoyed the island. So for, for uh, yeah, got an operating in thousand hours for two months, uh, for yeah. a month and a half, whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, on the boat. Um, so, but now it's the end of September, and we are heading south again down the ICW, keeping a close eye on all the hurricanes. Yeah. And they'll clear up before <laughs> we get even close to the ocean. Yeah. But right now, this is Lake Ontario. The swag was in front of us. We're like uh, four or five nautical miles from where we're going to actually stop for the night and check into the U.S. Yep. And that's it. That's what we're doing. First question is, why did we buy a Tollycraft? So if you've been following us for any length of time at all, you'd know that we had a 34 Tollycraft before this. Um, and before buying that, I did a lot of research on what boat to buy. Um, and there was a lot of information on... Uh, the reliability, the quality, the construction quality of Tollycraft boats. Um, more rare on the East Coast than they are on the West Coast, and less, much lesser known over here. Um, so the prices over here are a little cheaper, so what we felt like we were getting a higher quality boat for uh, a little bit less money than we would pay if you were over on the West Coast, where they're very highly regarded. and. Uh, to fetch a little bit more money over there. Uh, so, when <laughs> when we went to um, look for a cruising boat, we wanted really the top of the list was another Tollycraft. Uh, so a little bit of research into which boats were good for long-range cruising. Um, see kind the. Uh, hulls and, and things like that and the 44 Tollycraft along with the 48 Tollycraft um, rose to the top of the list. So we spent our time searching for uh, a Tollycraft of 44 to 48 foot um, and we found this one. Not an easy find. Though. Not an easy find on the East Coast. No, not, um, really, not, a, no, no, not a good one. Yeah. Yeah. The other reason we picked one of these is because our budget dictated it. Um, I wanted the highest quality boat I could get within my budget, yeah. and our budget was one hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So this was the boat, the vintage that we could get that we felt we were getting the best bang for our dollar. Yeah. What do we like about the boat? What is it particular about this boat that we like, having lived on it now for how long? Two years. Almost, over, over almost two years. Almost two years now. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first off, I just want to say I like the hull design and the efficiency of the hull. Um, and with this um, arrangement with these 32 weight caterpillars, um, it seems to be very efficient at slow speeds, and I really like how she planes and how she takes rough water. Um, so that's one thing I really like about this boat. There's, uh, there's other boats that uh, was on our list that might not have been so sea kindly. Yeah. Um, I think this is probably the best we could have done. I think so. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. 
So along with the efficiency, the ability to go on plane. So the hull is designed in such a way it's, uh, that if you need to get up and go, you can. <laughs> Why don't I tie this down and it's better than it is? Why do I keep thinking that this is okay? Not only that, it also has a shallow, fairly shallow draft, so three and a half or so feet, uh, which is great for ICW um, cruising and the Bahamas, um, especially in the ICW with shoaling and stuff. If you're, you know, uh, with the chances of uh, going and ground and stuff, it's just slightly less in this boat, so we're glad of that. Uh, the serviceability of most everything um, is really good. So there's hatches everywhere for everything that you need to get access to. Uh, I say most everything because there's one thing, and that's on the thing we don't like list that we'll get to in a few minutes. So what else is there we like? Well, I mean, I really like the layout of it, of the boat. Uh, although we did want the sedan layout, but now that I have this, where the salon is separate, from the galley, but the galley's not down too low. You're still part of the salon, and the dinette across from it is great for like working and stuff. Laptop mess is kind of tucked away, and you can still feel organized, I guess, in the salon. Otherwise, all of our work and stuff would be in the salon. And I uh, like the large windows in this boat. And you can, and they're all opening. You can have them all open. It's nice. Yeah, that is a good thing, actually. It having really the large is. Windows. Yeah. I mean, Airflow through the boat is unreal. We hardly ever have to run air conditioning no. as long as there's a little breeze. Yeah. Uh, the actual the windows, I think, are designed to be able to lift the engines through. So um, if you need to take the engines out for whatever reason to rebuild or anything, then you can actually take the windows out, which aren't too hard, and the engines can come out the windows. So that's a bonus. She has a flat deck, which I love, and it's so important. She's great to walk around the boat, very safe, and the deck, you can put out your chairs, and fit yeah, lots of people, and oh, it's nothing, yeah. It's just really nice. The floor deck being flat, it's another, like living deck like we have the aft deck that we sit on and everything uh, because there's no slope to the to the fore deck it's a, just another living area we, you know yeah. we pull our chairs up there we have sit around and it, it's uh, really I nice really to like have that. that our last polycraft had that we really liked it uh, another thing we really like uh and this is polycraft in general not this ju just this boat is that it has uh a double chine system on the hull. So a chine is the, the sharp, or the, the, the where the hull changes to the hull sides. Um, sometimes to get a boat to rise up out of the water faster, the chines are rather hard and they come out like this. And uh, on this boat, they don't. And on most of the telecrafts, I believe, they're kind of soft. There's a double chine. There's one in the water, and then there's one that comes up out of the water, and they're soft. But by soft, I mean they're rounder edges. Uh, most boats with one chime will have a sharper edge. What that does is provide lift to get out of the water. This thing lifts up out of the water fine like it is, but um, for those boats, it lifts up out of the water. But when it's not lifted, used to lift up out of the water, those chimes can cause, um, especially if you're anchored, uh, what's called chime slap. So it creates a pocket for the water and waves when you're at anchor for the waves to pull up into that pocket and the energy of the wave just slaps. Oh, it's and it's noisy. Like if you even dock next to somebody, it, it's yeah. Oh. So some people are used to that. They say that they like that sound. Oh, I don't. But know. Uh, you know, we're used since we've had the other telecraft. Yeah. We've been now you don't uh, hear 14 anything. years with telecrafts yeah. that have not had any chime slap, and I can't imagine being at anchor for days and days like we do, and constantly hearing chime slap. Yeah. Um, but this boat has no chimes left, so like a sailboat with, or a trawler with no chimes at all. Just a round hull. Uh, the water, the energy of the water just goes around the hull and you hear, you don't hear anything. No, yeah. that's, re I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Another thing I like is the, uh, the aft cockpit in the back. We came from a sedan style boat with a big cockpit in the back. 
And we thought that's what we wanted when we went to this style, uh, a long range cruiser. Um, so this, to have an aft cabin boat, was sort of a compromise for us. It was, it was um, yeah. But we took this one because it had an aft cockpit. Yeah. We really love the aft cabin now. I don't think we would have anything else, to be honest with you. Well, we lived with it for a couple of years. Um, but having that cockpit is, um, for us, for line handling and stuff, and getting on and off the boat, I really like the cockpit. I don't, I don't know if I'd have a boat. Actually, we looked at this. This boat also comes in a 40-footer um, with no aft cockpit. Um, and we were almost bought one of those yeah, on Lake Champlain. Yeah. Um, but I'm sort of glad we didn't have yeah. um, I The cockpit, we put stuff down there. It holds a lot of stuff. It's easy to handle the dinghy down there. You know, not the dinghy. The generator's back the there. The generator's back there, not in the engine room, so it's out of the way. I got more room than my engine room. Yeah, you don't hear it. And you don't hear the sound. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Very much. Yeah. The other thing is we wanted minimal canvas, and this boat has minimal canvas. One thing we really like, this one came with a hard top up here. So this is it. So the only canvas we have is right here. And it's enough. It's plenty. We oh. keep clean. I don't want any more than this. This, no. is, this is almost too much. So yeah. Um, we don't have canvas around the back. This boat did actually come with some old canvas that used yeah. to wrap around uh, the aft the aft deck. Um, we decided. No. It was too old anyway, we chucked it out, but uh, I don't think we'll be ever be putting any canvas around there. We don't want to maintain it, we don't want to store it when we want to have some open air. We just we just like it like that, just open. Being from a cockpit boat too, we're used to being outside, so it's uh, yeah. really the open air feeling is uh, really what we're after. So. What don't we like about this boat? Um, after living on it for two, three, two years. Um, I think this list is really short, actually. It's not, not, it's not a ton of things we no. don't like about the boat. Um, what do you oh, like? Uh, why I don't like the, uh, cannot find a spot sensible for the washer dryer. So we don't have a washer dryer on board. And uh, we, we could have put it in the back, a closet. We would have lost a closet. Um, but we decided not to do that. Um, yeah, so you just just go to a marina, do the laundry, and uh, it's not a huge deal. I mean, it really isn't because when you're in the Bahamas, you're on water rations anyways, and uh, you'd you have know, to run the Jenny for a long time to get the dryer to even dry anything. So yeah, and you could wash, but you're still going to hang your clothes. So what we do is just keep the laundry, go into a marina. There's always somewhere you can do laundry, and you know. It's not a huge deal. I tried to find a place to put one. Sydney really wanted one, wanted one within yeah. the first year. And the only place I could really find that's going to be uh, half doable is in the aft cabin uh, on the starboard side of the bed, up, like ripping out a cabinet and putting it up in, in there by a window. We seen some, I've seen we actually someone seen someone have it there like that. Yeah, but they did. That's a lot of work. That's not easy. A lot of woodwork. Yeah. So we'll just leave it. For we're, you. I think we're going to leave it. I yeah. even tried to measure it out, see if I can get one into the engine room and put it up where the stairs lift up from the kitchen, from the galley. Um, but I don't think I could fit one in without tearing everything up. So it's forgotten about. So really, we're moving on from the washer dryer. Yes. Yes, we are. The V berth, I I like it, and then sometimes I, I don't like making a bed that's a V berth. I just don't like doing it. It's always like not right. But um, it's good storage. It's it's great storage. You know, I can uh, store stuff on the top ledge and then through the whole V berth. It is a storage room for us. When people come, you just take it off and put it under the galley. Yeah. Table is kind of what I do. It, is, like, a, uh, it is a love hate relationship with yeah. that forward curve. If you had a full bed, then you're still going to put storage stuff probably. You, I don't know. You wouldn't have the storage. Yeah, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't want to put it on If you had an island berth up in the bow, yeah. you probably wouldn't use that. You wouldn't put stuff up on top of it because you'd be afraid to come off. But when it's on the beaver, somehow it feels like it's more secure when it's off to the side. Yeah. Well, but, and we don't have a lot of company. My parents come yeah, to visit us true. every now and then, and it's. Uh, so it, it's not a big deal. But if you did have company, 
coming all the time. I don't know. The bunk beds maybe would have been better. Bunk Something beds like up that. there, or yeah, the later telecraft, I think 1992 and above on the 44. Uh, they did a lot of styling changes. I don't know if there's any uh, other changes the to the boat though. that they did in terms of quality or construction or anything, but um, they did put an island berth in the forward cabin. Yes, they uh, did. So, I mean, if you're thinking about this kind of boat, then that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. But, it, but, oh, but it's not. Again, every boat is a compromise. Every single one. Every it's one. something you like and something so, you don't like. You just got to weigh the yeah. pros and cons and, you know. And Sean, what is it that you don't like about this boat? So Tollycraft thought about everything <laughs> to get access to, besides if you ever need to replace the black water tanks, the waste tanks. So knock on wood. Actually, there's one more thing I like about the boat, just how much exterior teak, so I can't really knock on much wood. It's a little bit right there. Um, knock on wood, I did, have not had any problem with the um, uh, waste tank. Yet. 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 But if I ever needed to replace the waste tank, unless there's some something I don't know about, and if you guys are Tullycraft guys, you know how to take that floor out to get the tank out, then I'd love to know. But from my opinion, you've got to saw the floor out and a piece of the, the aft bed in order to get that tank out and to put another tank in. So that's not too convenient. No. Same thing with the forward one. Yeah. Uh, there's a little hatch above it. In order to get the tank out, I think you'd have to saw it in pieces to get it out or cut a big hole in the floor. Yeah. Uh, we actually have decommissioned that one up there and have had a, installed a new tank under the galley, um, under the galley uh, floor. So that there's a space to, to do that in these boats. Um, but in the aft, there is no more space to put another new tank and decommission the old one, so you'd have to remove it. Yeah. So that that's pretty much my only. Yeah, that's thing. Shell the tank. That, yeah. Like I would dread to have to replace those tanks. <laughs> dread. The worst thing I hate on a boat is the waste systems, <laughs> and I don't want to deal with them. So I think that's it for this Q and A episode. Uh, stay tuned for more of these and more of our Bahamas episodes. Um, we're going to check into customs now. Check into customs, yep. We're going to see if they'll let us into the U.S. for another <laughs> few months. Get our cruising permit. Get our cruising permit, yep. yep. Anyway, we'll leave you with the time lapse of us crossing Lake Ontario into Las Vegas. Yay! We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks Cheers. for following along. Oh, also, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. <laughs> Smash the like button on this if you like the video. And uh, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Hit that too, you'll be alerted every time. Uh, we really appreciate you subscribing. And you can also follow us on Instagram and uh, Facebook, Facebook if you so desire. Um, more stuff, more real time stuff comes up on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So uh, yeah, move on over there and, uh, and uh, follow us along. All right guys, see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay guys, one more reason that we bought to Tollycraft. We're here edit editing videos, video day, rainy day at an anchorage, uh, and we realized one very important thing, and that was NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Yes. Sounds weird, but importing an Asian boat, which we had on our list, uh, Grand Banks, DeFevers. Ocean Alexanders. Ocean Alexanders. Yeah. Um, we would have had to pay an extra... 9%? duties at least on an asian boat yeah. to bring it in yeah to canada which we wanted to do of course yeah. so we had to pay 13 percent as Already. it was and that's enough that's plenty yeah. that's too much so, um, so where this was u.s made it, yeah it really helped us u.s uh, made also look uh, bringing it over so part of the free trade agreement between the countries yeah. where we don't have to pay duties going over so that's one more reason why we have a tolly craft a tolly craft american made <laughs> all right okay. so now back to ending the video